Hello and welcome to this class of Principles of Microeconomics. I am your teacher, Muhammad Nadeem Sarwar. Today, we shall discuss more about market structures and we shall talk about Doppley and Oligopoly. This is our first lecture on these models. So, let's start with the class. Students, a market structure called as Doppler includes only two firms. Whereas in oligopoly, there are few firms, mostly between 3 to 14, 15 firms. In both Doppler as well as in oligopoly, the firms may produce homogeneous commodity or differentiated products. Similarly, in both Doppler and Oligopoly, firms may join hand with each other and thus take price and output decisions with cooperation or firms may compete with each other and try to maximize their own profit without caring for others. There are a number of ways in which the price and output decisions can be formed. We shall discuss some of those cases in this lecture, whereas the case of strategic interaction between the firms, which is explained by game theory, will be discussed in next lecture. The models of Doppler or Oligopoly can be broadly classified into two categories. One called as Clusive models and second called as Non-Clusive models. Clusive models are those in which firms cooperate with each other and they take price and output decisions jointly. This category includes cartels and price leadership model. Whereas the category of non-clusive models include such models in which firms compete with each other. This category includes, for example, Kurno model, Bertrand model, King Devanker model or Stackelberg model. In this lecture, we shall briefly discuss cartels, price leadership, and King Devanker models. Students, as we already discussed, that cartel and price leadership are the example of Inclusive models and inclusive models are those in which firms take price and output decisions jointly. This cooperation between the firm could be open or explicit or it could be implicit or hidden, which is called as tacit. Collusion. Cartel is an example of such collusions. A cartel represents a body which is formed by the firms to decide how much the price will be charged for the commodity and how much the output will be produced. Cartel also decides the market share of each firm. The most well-known and pronounced example of cartel is OPEC, which is the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries and hold a control over most of the world's oil supply.
the cartels could be of a number of types for example joint profit maximization cartel or cartels that allocate the quota between the firms etc however we shall discuss only one such type which is joint profit maximization cartel joint profit maximization cartel are those which aim at maximizing the overall profit or joint profit of the firm these cartels fix the price and output level similarly they also fix the output of each firm and distribute the profit among the firms according to an agreed upon formula now let's discuss it graphically this diagram represents the total market the ar and mr curves represent the ar and mr the sum of ars and mrs of all the firms in this market the market is in equilibrium at point e where mc is equal to mr therefore the total output level will be at point qt this output will be produced jointly by all the firms in this cartel now the firm a will produce q1 level where its mc equals its mr and second firm sorry and this one will earn a profit above average cost of output similarly the second firm will produce at a level of output where its mc is equal to ma both firms will charge the same price which is set by the cartel body the cost curve of both firms may be different depending upon the technology and production efficiency it is possible that cartel divides the profit according to output and it is also possible that cartel divides profit between the firms equally or the profit distribution may be based upon the technology and production efficiency in this example if the cost per unit of both firms is different then their profit may be different now let's discuss the price leadership model price leadership model is applied mostly in situations where there is one large and several smaller firms in the market the large firm also called as dominant firm is selected as leader which sets price and smaller firms in the industry follow that price therefore the price of the product produced by any firm is same this dominant firm may also allocate the market supply between the firms we also believe that this dominant firm has more information about the market and about 
the smaller or follower pumps. It can estimate the total market demand at different prices and it can also estimate the total amount supplied by the smaller firms. Finally, the reader share and followers share depend upon total market demand and the total supply by the smaller firms. Leader supplies the leftover share after being supplied by the smaller firms. Normally, we assume that leadership or dominant firm is profit maximizing. However, it may set the price which is not in the best of its interest. It may set price lower than the profit maximizing level just to push other or smaller firms out of the market. If such an aggressive price policy is carried out, the dominant firm may get the monopoly over the market. Such practice is called predatory pricing. Now let's discuss the dominant firm's price strategy through diagram. As we discussed earlier that we assume that the dominant firm has an estimation of market demand and total quantity supplied by smaller firms. Here SS is the total supply of smaller firms which is obtained by horizontal summation of their MCs. DD is total markets demand at various prices. If dominant firm sets price at P4 level, the market demand will be small and this demand can be fulfilled jointly by all the small firms. If it sets price equal to P3, then P3A quantity will be supplied by the small firms jointly, whereas AB, that is the leftover demand, will be fulfilled by the leader. Leader can set any price, but the lower price a leader sets, the more share that firm gets. For example, at price P2, the share of smaller firm shrinks, whereas the gap between demand and supply widens, and this gap is filled by leader. Similarly, if it decreases the price to P1 level, then smaller firm's share shrinks to zero and all the market demand is fulfilled by the leader firm. In other words, leader gets monopoly power. Now, the question before us is what price will a leader choose? The price decision will depend upon leader's strategy. Leader's strategy could be aggressive, could be protecting its own interest, or could be like each firm get a fair share in the market. Let's assume that leader firm 
is profit maximizing firm. In such case, its MR and AR will be like this. It will produce a quantity QL which will be determined by the equalization of MC and MR. If per unit costs are represented by AL, sorry, average cost such as ACL, then at price P3, the leader's profit will be maximized and its output level will be OQL. In this case, smaller firm share will be P3A and leader's share will be AB. However, leader may set any price. For example, it may sacrifice some of its profit and set price at P2 or it may bear some losses just to kick out other firms from the industry and set price at P1 level. The actual level of price chosen by the leader depends on its thoughts. However, the profit maximization principle suggests that leader should set the price equal to P3. Now let's discuss the other kinds of oligopoly called as non-closive oligopoly. These models assume that firms do not make any explicit or implicit agreement about price, output or market share. Thus, firms compete with one another and each firm tries to maximize its profit. This competition between the firms benefit consumers because in presence of competition firms fear charging a higher price. Similarly, firms work on to improve the current quality of the product to attract more and more consumers. It is also possible for firms to increase price even sorry it may also be impossible for the firms to increase price even after increase in cost because they fear that if their competitors did not follow the increase in price the firm that increases the price may lose its market share one of the models that explain this behavior is called as King Demand Curve Order. This model explains through the principles of economics why sometimes this happens that a firm which aims to maximize its profit does not increase its price and sacrifice some profit when its cost increases. This model was introduced by Paul Suisi in 1939. In this model, Suisi introduced and used market share demand curve as well. Here, the MR and AR are represented as DD and DMR. This DD is oligopolistic demand curve. Whereas market share is represented by this 
कैपिटल टी डी कर लेट सपोज दैट प्राइस इज फिक्स एट अ सर्टन पॉइंट कॉल्ड एज पी स्टार दिस इज अ वेरी स्पेसिफिक लेवल ऑफ प्राइस the firm believes that if it lowered the prices of its output its competitors will also will also follow therefore each firm in the market will decrease the price and therefore the market share of each firm will remain the same in this case a capital d part of the demand curve becomes more relative which represents the market share of each firm however firm thinks that if it increased price from this critical level of price p star the other firms which are its competitors will not follow and hence their prices will remain the same this will result in huge reduction in market share of that firm only the loyal customers will remain with the firm therefore individual demand curve represented as small d small d is more relevant if the price is increased from this selected point therefore the relevant part of mr which will be important in this case is so the actual demand curve faced by the firm will be small d a capital d and its mr will be b sorry mr will be small d b c mr d the demand curve will have a king at that particular level of price and at that level of output there will be a gap in mr as long as the mc of the firm will pass through this gap the price level will remain unchanged so the price will be at p star and output will be at q star this will remain the same until and unless mc is in the gap shown as bc therefore the small increase in the cost will not lead to a change in price because the competitiveness in the industry will prevent the firm to increase the price as it will be fair it will face a fear of losing its customers that's all for this lecture please post your questions and give your feedback and comments in next lecture we shall discuss the game theory please consider subscribing the channel liking and sharing the video thank you and goodbye